Hello, welcome back to theCUBE special coverage here in New York City, where we are presenting the CUBE coverage of IBM's Analyst Relations Forum. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Dave Lookham doing interviews all day here in New York City. We have a special conversation here between IBM and AWS. We've got Nick, who's the GM and head of Global Strategic Partners at IBM, and Manu, who's the GM of Business Applications Partners at AWS. First of all, Better Together has always been my favorite theme. Love AWS, you know, we have a cloud there. IBM, you guys just got a great positioning going on, the product strategy, the product's looking great, and partnerships are huge right now. Yeah. It's a key part of the strategy. Obviously, Amazon's a big partner. Nick, Manu, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the partnership. Let's start, Nick, we'll start with you. IBM is doing more business with AWS. Talk about the relationship. Yeah, I mean, our, our relationship with with AWS goes back a very long time. In fact, we were just talking about earlier today that we were comparing like 15, 20 years, all kinds of big numbers. Uh, from my perspective, the relationship really took off though three years ago. Kind of a whole new inflection point and acceleration happened when we decided together to launch Rosa. Uh, Rosa being OpenShift on AWS, a huge step forward in terms of trust and hybrid cloud and, and the fact that we both believe there's a hybrid world in the future. I think from there, it's really just kind of become a rocket ship. We've got our consulting practice growing every single quarter. Uh, we've got over 24,000 uh, certifications now from an AWS perspective. And then it really took kind of that next rocket ship two years ago now uh, when we kicked off our software collaboration. Software started with, let's just make IBM software as SaaS, launch it on AWS Marketplace. Then the marketplace relationship kept expanding. We now have 70 plus products that are available in 100 plus, almost 100 countries now. Uh, and then just in the last six months, kind of taking that next step, which is all about, let's really make sure our products not just work on AWS, but work well with AWS. And I think that's been exciting as well. And then just give a quick plug for what you guys are doing with partnerships. I know the ecosystem, we've been covering it for 13 years. Um, obviously it's been super important. It's the, it's the lifeblood of AWS. Give a quick update on the strategic value of your partnerships. Yeah, I think uh, what Nick mentioned, IBM is one of our largest uh, strategic partners and that cuts across both, and a very unique partner in the sense that it cuts across both technology partnerships as well as consulting. Yeah. Um, you know, right from Red Hat to the entire IBM software as well as to consulting. I think there are two big uh, stats I would like our audience to remember. One is AWS is Red Hat's number one channel partner, both across RHEL as well as across Rosa, the two big offerings. And the second one, is majority of IBM software is now available as SaaS. So over the last 18 months to two years, we have now launched more than 20 software titles that are available right across sustainability, data AI, security, and automation. Uh, and and you know, both of those software, all of those software categories are available on marketplace. So it's just a very exciting yeah. time over. What's interesting too, and knowing both of your companies and covering and, and meeting the engineers and the executives, is you guys were all doing data and AI-like things, and even probably AI before it became generative AI. Predictive analytics has been around for a long, long time. Business analytics, you name it. You guys both been there. Uh, but now it's gen AI all the time, right? You know, <laughs> Matt Garma, who I interviewed last month, yeah. you know, he said, you know, developers are the lifeblood of our business. And they're back now with the global startup program that right. Ruben's yes, running. Yes. Yep. So you have now a whole nother wave of inventors coming in. You have enterprises who are re retrofitting their platforms and being agile and rebuilding yep. new value. So this Gen AI connection fuses the partnership. Talk about what that means now with, the, with your relationship, uh, what you guys are announcing with Bedrock and Bedrock and Granite. What's, what, what's happening now? Because there's real pressure because the market demand, the, the first wave of demonstrable values hitting. Yep. It's still early innings as we say, but again, there's going to be more adoption. It's just going to be coming later, like the internet and the web, and first people get online, and then next to online populations, everyone. Yeah. Yep. AI is going down the same road. What's happening now with Gen AI? What's the, what's yeah. the IBM plus AWS connection? Uh, I'm happy to start. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's been really fun for me to kind of look back. As, as you know, IBM strategy for four, almost five years now has been hybrid cloud and AI. Uh, I think when we first were talking about that with customers, they're like, I don't know exactly what that means, but but okay, you know, let's figure it out. Yeah. Think fast forward to where we are today. You've got clients with you know data kind of spread across the enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Some on AWS, some on prem, lots of different on prem versions, and then they're trying to figure out insights. To your point, how do we make sure I can get insights from data across all those different places, and how 
can I do that in the easiest possible way? And then when I look at our relationship with AWS, what we've spent a lot of time on is, of course, making products available as Manu touched on, but now it's kind of that next phase is we're also seeing this very much as a team sport, not just as it a hybrid environment, but there's lots of different tools, there's lots of different decisions. There, these are large enterprises, so people are choosing different tools for different types of problems. And then how do we make sure that our technology works well with AWS technology? And I think we announced it, think, um, earlier this year, uh, the fact that WatsonX.Governance and, and Amazon SageMaker are now playing nicely together to make sure that governance can govern SageMaker activities. Um, and I think that's really just the start of a lot more of that collaborative piece. So it's going beyond just making our software available and moving towards making sure our software works amazing with our best partners. Yes, and I think just building on what Nick said, from an AWS perspective, and you know this, John, we are really working on democratizing the entire Journey AI stack. And that really starts from the bottom hardware layer, making sure that the NVIDIA instances, as well as the Trainium and Inferentia are available to our customers yeah. at higher price performance. Then it ties back to the development and the training of the LLM and the Journey AI yeah. models. Yeah. And then on top of the higher level services. I think this is where we are really working very closely in that training layer with IBM. Yeah. And that's the Watson X dot governance tying it together with SageMaker. So if you look at SageMaker from a conceptual yeah. standpoint, we already have a lot of fundamental security and privacy instruments in place. And I think that's really at the heart of AWS as overall as a company. And so that's like network security, you know, data security. You want to make sure that you're not using customer data to really train the model. So that that is key. Audit and IAM rules as well. But then when you extend across the entire Genie AI LLM training capability, the second aspect is what is the risk profile of an LLM? Yep. How are, what is the entire pipeline of really training the model? There is compliance involved, legal involved. What does that workflow look like? And I think the third piece is, you know, with the EU AI Act, we are getting quarterly updates on the entire compliance and the, the legalese around these LLMs. So making sure yeah. that the Watson X governance complementing the SageMaker and potentially then uh, the bedrock story is super important for our customer. I think we talked about Gigaspace as a customer, which is using the foundational layer of SageMaker and then using Watson X governance to really complement the two solutions. Together. Before we get into the bedrock granted announcement, I do want to point out, I think this is important not to call out because IBM and AWS have shared first principles. You know, the trust, yep. the, you talk about data supply chain and pro provability. End-to-end yes. -end workflows right now, if you can't explain the AI, you mentioned regulation. If you can't generate a report, yep. I mean, this is table stakes. This is, and by the way, it's not easy either, Nick. I mean, Agreed. this is where we're hearing here today that if you design it right, not bolt on governance, yep. yes. this has been the key thing. It's very in the weeds, but it's important to call out because if you miss that step, you could be one over your skis, one on product, yep. drift, hallucinations, security, come, yep. and then never mind the compliance and the reporting requirements. Yep. Explain I think, that. Uh, I think you're, first of all, you're spot on. Um, I think what's been exciting to me is to see that transformation happen really just in 2024. If you rewind, rewind back to 2023, every client I talked to is just like, we're doing as many Gen AI projects as I can possibly find because we've been mandated to do more Gen AI. Yeah, from the board. Do it, Gen AI, exactly. I read about it. it. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. <laughs> Using all kinds of different tools, different yeah. approaches. And now I think we've reached the, this point of maturity back yeah. to thinking about cost and price and yeah. how is this really going to scale. In many cases, our clients are saying, well, we've already built a lot of stuff, but we didn't think about governance. So there is a yeah. bolt on kind of like, well, how do we come in and try and understand what you guys have done yeah. and we can help in those situations. But what excites me most is the newest discussions we're having now typically start with governance. It's like, yeah. what's the value? Like, what are you trying to solve? Well, here's what I'm trying to solve, but how am I going to make sure I can trust it? Yeah. Is starting out now as the first discussion. And I think that's where our collaboration really comes to life. Yeah. And that, yeah. so a lot of the AWS teams have shared the same, that that's where discussions are now starting as opposed to ending. If you told me five years ago that the hot topic would be discovered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure, come on. <laughs> Someone come in, on. in uh, you yeah, know, the audit team yeah, would tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yawn, you know, like, come on. <laughs> this, but it's an enabler. It's, yep. not a, it's not blocker. It's an offensive opportunity to move the needle. That's right. I mean, Big time. customers need governance to deploy these LLMs at scale. I think that's stable stakes at this time, and I think the partnership between our two companies is really enabling that. To, but I think there's another meta point here, John, in terms of what we talked about landing IBM software on AWS. But then it's not just we don't stop there. I think that's just a starting yeah. point. Yeah. 
we really now continue to take feedback from our customers in terms of how do we continue to improve that software. So I think the example around what's the next governance with SageMaker is one example. The thing that we're doing with RDS DB2, where we're integrating those two offerings, that's a fantastic example. The stuff that we're doing in terms of constantly improving Instana uh, is another example. I think it just complements to IBM. Yeah. You know, the company is innovating both in context of getting the software as SaaS on AWS, yeah. I think, and then just building on top of it, but also innovating on the go-to-market side. Yeah. We talked about in the session before, um, all of IBM software, more than 80 offerings are available on Marketplace. Um, we have more than 26 SaaS offerings. Uh, then we also have our channel partners, the distribution channel, they're also available through Marketplace. So I think it's just a, a 360 on our partnership in terms of you know, accelerating our And it's interesting you both have ecosystems. I'm gonna talk in depth about our in this in our podcast tomorrow with Dave Vellante. Uh, we've been riffing on this idea of uh, the ecosystem transformation in okay. and of itself. No one's talking about this, by the way. It's about the old ecosystem, just the previous SaaS generation, it was an ecosystem of vendors. They did stuff on the cloud and it was all good and cloud greatness was there. And now you have a distributed computing environment with Gen AI. It's a connected ecosystem. So Very you know so. what you're hearing, agents are going to talk to agents, multi-steps, multi-models. Matt Garman two years ago, you know, before he was CEO said, we want every model to work on AWS. So you guys were already seeing the multi-model. The ecosystem is changing significantly. Yep. Talk about that dynamic because now your strategy is a, to be get a great robust ecosystem, but they're connecting into the platform. Yeah, okay. and we were just talking about this earlier over Explain. lunch, and I think a really good example of that that we, we were just talking about is Salesforce. Like Salesforce is a huge AWS partner. They've launched Data Cloud on AWS. <laughs> we have just launched a partnership with our WatsonX.data and Salesforce Data Cloud running on AWS. And we have expanded that to say, let's also take IBM DataGate and allow Z data to now be surfaced from an insight perspective through WatsonX.data on Data Cloud yeah. on AWS. And that intersection is really just accelerating. To your point around agents, you know, at Salesforce, at Dreamforce, we launched you know a collaboration with Agent Force. So it's Watson Orchestrate yeah. working with yeah. Agent Force, WatsonX Orchestrate skills yeah. working underneath Orchestrate. And I think these intersections, we were just saying that I, I think as we look forward. How to be more intentional around these intersections yeah. is something we can spend a lot of time on because it's happening anyways. Yeah. So how can we potentially guide it you to drive to the most value? have to be intentional because the data is there. Because you know one of the best things about Amazon Web Services I always said from day one is it's horizontally scalable. Yeah. Right. And then when you have horizontally scale with data, it's a whole different equation. Hence, that's the conversation. But the vertical domain expertise in yep. the applications are specific. That's where Gen AI shines. In the, in the app layer. Okay, so that's happening. We, finally, it's multiple years. <laughs> so Manu, I want to ask you uh, on that point, if you work backwards from the customer, which is the famous Amazonian way, that's right. what is that working backwards look like from an IBM customer perspective? Is it better consumption of services of IBM? Yeah. Is it better together one plus one equals five? I mean, take us through what that customer uh, value proposition is. I think Not to put you on the spot, but no, I will. Well, first is one plus one equal 11. <laughs> <laughs> Take the plus out, make it, just call it 11. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know, across our different product categories, uh, we are really working back from, hey, what are the top feature requests that our customers are asking for? And then really prioritizing both on a joint roadmap mm -hmm. and then delivering. And so a part of that is around Rosa and making sure that it is supporting some of our latest uh, yeah. innovations that we're doing on the hardware side, right? Right from Graviton to Inferentia to Trainium. So I think that's just yeah. one example. The, the other thing we did is RDS DB2. That's like, you know, customers really want a managed database system, we deliver. Yeah. I think the next thing we are doing is making sure this governance, which is going to be a really super big focus in 2025, it's available across our entire machine learning, yeah. AI infrastructure, both across SageMaker and Bedrock, and a lot of the teams are working across that. Then, you know, making sure that the entire automation portfolio now, IBM has a very rich automation portfolio, right, from Turbonomics to yeah. content management to and so on and so forth. Making sure that really ties into the fabric of AWS. Yeah. And I think all of it is really delivered from, you know, feedback from our customers like Toyota, from Delta Airlines, from Japan Airlines, from Adobe, who are really guiding us in terms of what should be the next priority feature for us to deliver. Yeah, we're getting the hook here. I wish I had more time, um, but Nick, inference is a shared thing too. Um, yeah. Inference is right around the corner. Well, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about that reinvent coming up. Um, inference quality, performance, latency, and cost will be a big deal. 
especially with multiple models and all the reasoning and multi-step agents are coming down. Yep. Um, real quick, take us through what's next because reInvent's <clears throat> coming. You got the announcement with Bedrock and Granite working together. What's next for IBM and AWS's relationship? Give us a little teaser. I think, I mean, from my perspective, and Manu already started to talk about it, but the next phase of our relationship is really more about our technology working better with their technology. And to your point, a lot of that has to do with customer requests. What are customers asking for? How do we get those prioritized across our product teams? And it's not just making sure our software runs on their environment, it's making sure it runs with their other tools. Yeah. I think the other piece to your point, and back to this kind of scaling of Gen AI, one is certainly governance, that's where most discussions are starting. The very second is value and cost. How do I make sure that I've got the right models for the right things? And I think that's where a lot of our multi-model yeah. collaboration will come in, where there's different models to solve different types of problems. How do you do that in the most cost-effective way? Uh, but in general, I think it's just going to be listening to our customers and, and you know, continuing yeah. to innovate together. Yeah, and I think I would just add to what Nick said. You know, Nick talked about the stuff around governance. Mm -hmm. He talked about how we're going to build and innovate faster. I think I will add two more uh, segments. One is the, the t thing about Salesforce and how do we get the yep. entire ecosystem yeah. working together. Probably that would be a third pillar. Yeah. And then the fourth pillar is around, you know, just making sure that we're delivering on the Gen AI capabilities together. So Heterogeneous ecosystem, which gives choice for the customers and gives the designers and the system developers a you got better it. way to, to compose or whatever, what, what, what word are we calling it now? Yes, yeah, solve whatever the challenges <laughs> are. I, I think you're right. That's very well said. Nick, Manu, thanks for coming on. I appreciate your Absolutely. time. I wish we had more time. We'll, we'll follow up on inference um, and all the product stuff you guys have. Congratulations. And look forward to seeing yeah, it at reInvent. We'll yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm John Furrier here for a special CUBE edition here at the IBM Analyst Forum with Dave Vellante, Dave Lithwick, and the entire CUBE team is here on the ground getting all the data for you. Thanks for watching.